Assalamu alaikum. Hi everyone. Warmly welcome to all of you. Uh, we are here with another important uh, training, kind of training session. But of course, uh, I just want to give today the awareness of NFPA codes and standards because much needed uh, uh, standards to ensure fire prevention, protection and fighting, you know, fire fighting. Uh, because since uh, a lot of uh, fire incidents are still happening. So what I realized personally as a professional and also uh, as per my experience, if uh, all the countries, you know, they give some Im real importance to NFPA codes and standards, they can uh, bring uh, a strongly positive changes because prevention is better than cure, right? And if you truly want to prevent from fire incidents, you have to follow some globally acceptable, well-recognized uh, NFPA codes and standards. So in that scenario today, I'll be just giving uh, initial awareness, like what type of codes and standards are there and why we must follow them actually. So uh, like there is uh, a total, if I, if I just go through the list, uh, let me a little bit zoom in. So if you see, we have uh, NFPA uh, fire code, we have hydrogen technologies code. There is a standard for commissioning of fire protection and life safety system. So the fire safety systems, uh, while commissioning is going on, of course you can, especially for fire protection. So uh, there is a standard NFPA three. And NFPA four is all about the standard for integrated uh, fire protection and life safety system testing, you know. And most importantly, the NFPA 10, which is mostly recognized for fire extinguishers, standard for portable fire extinguishers. All technical information, the systematic information you need, much better is to study this particular code, you know. And get some time. You know, sometimes I say as a, as a HSC or health safety professional or even as a fire specialist, we always have a daily learning hobby. You know, because we are guiding people, we are working as a trainer or as a consultant or even as a manager. So uh, as a safety officer or HSC officer or supervisor. So uh, learning should be our daily habit, you know, and habits sometimes we need to develop. If you believe you don't have a reading hobby, start developing and focus on each segment. Like you have uh, uh, a key passion within yourself to be the fire specialist that you want uh, companies on, you know, to make sure there isn't any chance of uh, fire incidents, then that is the area where you must get some uh, NFPA codes and standards daily study. And of course, a time will come, you can go for their exams also, because sometimes you study day and night and you learn a lot of things, but later on, if you don't have any professional certification, it would be harder for you to prove that you are a qualified person. So that's why but the NFPA 11 and 11A is all about uh, uh, low, median, and high expansion forms. Okay. If we talk about uh, a sprinkler system, you can study NFPA uh, 13, you know. Same way we can go with, you know, it's a big list, but just random standards for your uh, better understanding. If you want to like uh, study and understand the water additives for fire control and vapor mitigation, you can study that code. If you truly need a pri private fire protection, you know, especially for water tanks, I definitely NFP, uh, you know, 22 code will be helping for us. And you have uh, some sort of, uh, uh, are you looking for, you know, the inspection, testing and maintenance of water-based fire protection systems? Then NFPA 25 will be definitely helping you. Same way for flammable and combustible liquid, there is NFPA 30, you know. So uh, let me let me just share a few of uh, other important ones. You know, this forest products, we are we are facing a lot of uh, fire uh, incidents in the forest globally. So NFPA uh, 46, you know, recommended for safe practice for storage of forest products. So in that scenario, of course, we can get some help. Same way if we are storing some bulk oxygen systems for consumer sites, NFPA 50 can help us. And also, guys, uh, for uh, fuel gas code, national fuel gas code, this is NFPA 54. We also have uh, 
uh, you know, liquefied petroleum gas, LPG, we call it, uh, that code, we can study NFPA, uh, you know, 58. That would help you. Even for National Electrical Code or Explosion Prevention System, especially we need in fire, uh, the oil and gas industry, you know, the chemical industry or any high hazardous industry. Of course, that code would be really important for them to follow. NFPA 70 is all about electrical code, no harm to study, you know, especially the requirements uh, one and two family dwellings. So both way, these, uh, you know, uh, for electrical safety, of course, it would be helping. Most importantly, for fire alarm and signaling code, this is NFPA 72, you know. Then we have I choose few more. For industrial, electrical standard for industrial machinery, no harm to study NFPA 78. Every code is important, but what I mean is I'm just uh, sharing some, some important ones. Every code and standard is important. Don't get me in the wrong direction, okay? I'm just giving my kind of uh, prioritization, you know. You want to study, uh, make three colors. Okay, red colors mean these standards uh, are more important for me as a professional to understand, first of all. Then you give a yellow color, then a green color, that anytime you have uh, uh, free time or just to study some green standards also. So what I mean is this is the way you can uh, put a color actually, which otherwise there are millions of standards, you know, thousands of standards. So uh, you have to be very much specific as per your industry requirement or uh, you're serving any sort of industry, you know. The same like uh, maybe for boiler and combustion system hazards code, this one also would be helping, you know. And for parking structures, might be we can give it, uh, even though it's important, but we can give it a yellow color. Air conditioner and ventilating system, it is also important, you know. We can give it red color. So, same way, I'm, I'm just sharing, you know, otherwise this video would be so long, but let me just. Uh, put a little bit slowly structure, uh, scrolling down, and I hope you will have an idea how that uh, long list looks like. Okay. Even for types of building construction, that would also be helping the construction industry. Okay, guys, several codes and standards are there. So I hope uh, it will help you. Explosive materials code, maybe that would also be helpful. Loss, fire loss prevention, security services and fire loss prevention. That code could also be interesting. Even emergency and safety operations are motor sports venues. Combustible dust, fundamentals of combustible okay. dust. It's again important, you know, to understand, especially in oil and gas industry. Sulfur fires and explosions. Even for textiles and films, in our Pakistan, several incidents happen. But what I mean is, if we follow in true spirit the NFP codes and standards, and we implement properly, and we maintain them, we keep them sustained, you know, because maintainability and sustainability is one of the biggest challenge, especially after implementation of any sort of management system. Could be the fire safety management system, waste management system, and environmental management system, in other words quality management or, you know, occupational health and safety management system, whatever system you're working in, even quality management system, but the real challenge is to maintain it, to keep it sustained, you know, to make it daily habit, to make our safety and quality our daily habits. That is the real challenge, actually. So I hope this video will help you. If you are new to our channel, you can subscribe and, uh, you know, like, share within your network. I'm sure that this is how we can to give some awareness and help our global community. Okay, I'm just scrolling down. Huh? 
that is all about the last one recovery stream generator systems okay bye bye thank you very much thanks for watching